So effective tomorrow, uh, the state will be enacting a statewide mask mandate. Uh, and obviously a decision that did not come lightly. Many factors were clearly taken into consideration with regards to the data and the impact and the effect on our citizens and businesses. As with many mandates uh, across the country, similar mask mandates, this mandate will apply to all indoor public spaces and outdoors as well when social distancing cannot be maintained. Uh, people who have turned, tuned into these press conferences over the last eight months, I think, know very clearly how seriously we've encouraged mask wearing. It works. The data shows that. It has been proven. Uh, the social distancing, incredibly important as well. Uh, but today we're really elevating that message even further given the seriousness of the current crisis and this latest surge in COVID cases and hospitalizations. Uh, throughout the crisis, uh, the state has remained consistent, obviously, in urging folks to wear their masks. Um, again, knowing that uh, the data backs up and supports uh, the importance of it, knowing that in this current surge, uh, this is now a, a really a statewide issue more than ever before, uh, not just uh, confined to the highest levels within the southern tiers of Rockingham and Hillsborough County as we saw in the first uh, wave of this virus back in the spring, but really uh, understanding its impact throughout the entire state and all populations in all counties. Um, We've always said, uh, or I should just say, we, we've said all along that the mask mandate was always on the table, uh, and we were going to make sure that we let it, let data, as you can see behind me, uh, really drive drive a lot of our decisions. And it, it is clear in looking at the data that uh, this mask mandate is in the best interest of our citizens. So we always talk about not just having a single metric or a single data point. Um, what you see here are some uh, data, some of the most important data points uh, around the mask mandate that we've been focusing on. First off, you have our percent positive. Uh, maybe a month, two months ago, our percent positive rate was under 1% uh, pretty consistently. Now that we're doing all the antigen tests, uh, when you add the PCR tests into that, uh, you have a percent positive rate somewhere averaging between 4 and 5% right now. Uh, and so we're really hitting back to those percent positive levels that we saw uh, all the way back in March and April. Uh, for a while, we talked a lot about how more than half the towns in this state didn't have any COVID. Zero, zero active cases of COVID in more than 50% of the towns for quite a while. That number has drastically changed, uh, showing its widespread uh, effect over, over the entire state. And well more than 75% of the cities and towns in the state now have active COVID cases. The counties that we currently had have with what we call substantial spread. Uh, substantial spread is uh, defined as, I believe, 100,000 cases. Uh, I'm sorry, 100 cases, more than 100 cases per 100,000. Um, it's a kind of a, a, normal, a, a normalization of that data point. 10 out of 10 counties. Every single county, as Dr. Chan alluded to earlier, uh, is uh, officially categorized as having substantial spread. Not light, not moderate, uh, but really substantial. That's the highest level of spread. Uh, we have our long-term care facility outbreaks with the five outbreaks. I think there were five more that we added today. Um, we are back up to 11 long-term care outbreaks. And the two big issues that we're focusing on, the biggest variables here, have to do with the economy and uh, health care workforce, long-term care workforce. Uh, the issues have happening within that long, those long-term care facilities uh, and the area when it comes to the mask mandate that we're putting statewide, uh, we think we can have the, the biggest impact and frankly the most flexibility with the economy but the biggest impact in maintaining uh, our COVID numbers at a manageable level. But now we're at 11 outbreaks. I think we were down to one or two just a couple months ago. So this number is rising and as I think most folks understand, uh, this is the area of the highest risk. You have individuals of, of, um, that are elderly, that have other many other underlying health conditions and unfortunately we just know that the fatality rate within those uh, congregate settings uh, can be quite high. So again, uh, we've really crossed a, a, a barrier there to, to say the least. Staffing. We talk a lot about the staffing shortages in long-term care and hospitals. Um, it really is a crunch nationally. We've discussed that. There's uh, virtually no state that doesn't have an issue. Uh, and definitely here in, in New Hampshire, well over 70% uh, of our hospitals and long-term care facilities have indicated some type of staffing crunch. Um, some are, are more extreme than others, uh, but they're all experiencing some level of, of staffing need. Um, folks doing a lot of overtime, whatever it might be. That was really the impetus. Uh, this data point here, this greater than 70%, was really the impetus in driving the additional $35 million we put towards long-term care facility staff, uh, specifically around uh, Medicaid patients. And we did that last week. 
Also, the testing uh, that uh, Commissioner Chabonet talked about today, the additional $6 million we're putting towards um, the, the additional sentinel testing, if you will, within the long-term care facilities specifically. Again, anything we can do to provide another tool and resource uh, to our really what is, we have, has been identified as uh, one of, if not the most vulnerable population during the COVID pandemic. And finally, the two-week hospitalization rate. So uh, over the last two weeks, you can see it's, it's just over 100%. Uh, two week, I think today we're just about 100 people in hospitals uh, with COVID. Two weeks ago, uh, that was less than 50. So we have doubled the number of individuals over the last two weeks that are currently in our hospitals. Now, uh, we still have capacity. That's the good news. Um, but what we're really trying to do is get ahead of this. We're really making taking actions today, knowing that we're not necessarily going to see the positive results tomorrow or the next day or even next week, but three or four weeks down the road when this hospitalization number can really potentially uh, start putting a lot of pressure within our hospital system. We don't want to have to close hospitals. We don't want to have to um, go back to, to uh, the restrictions that were in place. All of this is being done to maintain the flexibility, frankly, maintain much of the success that New Hampshire has had with, again, keeping our COVID numbers low, our economy strong, and our healthcare system open and operational for the folks that are going to need it the most. So these are all, when you put in all six of these variables, all six of these puzzle pieces, if you will, as you can see, we've really crossed thresholds uh, in all of them. And, and that, again, uh, shows us both on a regional uh, level within the state, uh, a, a statewide level, uh, and looking at the different constituencies that are most uh, dangerously impacted by this, um, the, the mass mandate going to place we know can have a very positive effect. Um, the mass mandate, uh, again, not to go through every uh, exemption, there are some exemptions in there. One of them I want to point out is really schools. And they really, Schools have done a tremendous job in New Hampshire. I mean, a phenomenal job in New Hampshire, and, and their success uh, is something to be championed. And that's, their, their, I think, the folks that deserve the credit there is, is I think, Department of Public Health did a great job uh, working with administrators, principals, and teachers. Those folks, are, and the students themselves, those folks that are on the front lines, managing, wearing their masks, maintaining social distancing, following those rules and guidance documents that both the state and the local uh, jurisdictions put into place. The fact that we technically have zero outbreak in schools. We have clusters. We have about a dozen or so, maybe even more of a dozen, a dozen or so of clusters of illness where uh, from an outside source uh, there have been small clusters in there. But the inter-school transmission of COVID is virtually zero in this state, and, and we, and which means we don't have outbreaks. We have very little uh, transmission between cohorts or between clusters. Um, that is a real testament to the value of wearing a mask. Virtually every school has some form of mask rules uh, implemented across the state. It's working. The students are following the rules. It's being managed by the teachers and the administrators. They're making sacrifices. They're making changes in their system, but it's working and it's, it's, it's proven to be successful, which is a, a great data point that we lean on a little bit to know the value of wearing a mask and the, the importance of it now across this entire state. Um, obviously, you know, we, we, when we first got in uh, and started, you know, as the second wave started to hit us, um, you know, we, one thing that we started to really look at was that asymptomatic spread. Um, you know, when it comes to the mask mandate, if you're in a public place, maybe you're in a store uh, and you can't maintain social distancing uh, in any way with, with other folks that, that aren't from your immediate family, um, obviously it is never anyone's intention to asymptomatically spread uh, COVID. Um, but it's happening, and it's happening at an incredibly alarming rate. Um, and when you take that risk, if you will, if you're not wearing a mask, you don't just risk that un uh, one other individual getting COVID. You risk that individual then spreading it to potentially a loved one. You risk all the folks that come in contact with that individual or yourself having to be quarantined. You risk kids having to be put out of school for, for weeks while they, while they too are being quarantined. It isn't just the, the health risk di directly around COVID itself, but it's all the other mitigating issues that have to, and indirect issues that come with that when you're not wearing a mask, when asymptomatic transmission uh, hits to the levels which we have seen it across the state. Um, wearing a mask is really all about keeping friends, family, neighbors, critical workforce members, uh, and those they care for uh, safe and, and allowing our economy uh, to stay open.